While designing the columns of an RCC structure, the first step is to categorize the columns into three categories. That is, actually loaded columns, columns subjected to axial load and uniaxial bending, and the third one, columns subjected to axial load and biaxial bending. In this lecture, I am going to explain to you all the three categories of columns briefly. And at the end, I will discuss how to decide whether a column in a building is actually loaded, uniaxially loaded, or by actually loaded. In an actually loaded column, the load acting on the column passes through the centroid of the section. In such columns, the beams on all four sides of the column will be of uniform length and cross section. Hence, the moment generated by all the four sides will be of equal magnitude and the moment created by each beam will be balanced out by their opposite beams. Therefore, the net effect of the moment is negligible. However, it is practically very much difficult to cast an actually loaded column. That's why IS456-2000 suggests that a column should be designed by considering a minimum eccentricity of 20 mm. By the term eccentricity, we mean the load does not pass through the centroid in a real sense, but slightly away from the centroidal axis of the column. In case of actually loaded columns with uniaxial bending, the vertical loads acting on the column do not pass through the centroid of the section. Rather, the loads act eccentrically either on the x-axis or the y-axis of the column cross-section. These columns have beams either only in one direction or in three directions. When connected by three beams, the beams in opposite directions should have a uniform length and cross-section. When connected by two beams on opposite sides only, both the beams should have unequal spans or cross-sections. In all the cases, the net moment should be created along one direction only, that is, along x-axis or y-axis. Now talking about the third category of columns, that is, actually loaded columns with biaxial bending, the vertical loads acting on the column do not pass through the centroid of the column. Rather, the load is eccentric about both the axes in the plane of the column, that is, the load does not act on either the x-axis or y-axis. This can be understood easily by considering the xy plane with origin at the center of the column. If the load is acting on the x-axis only with y coordinate 0, such a column will be an actually loaded column with uniaxial bending. And if both the coordinates exist, the system will be biaxial. Biaxially loaded columns are connected by beams in two adjacent perpendicular directions. Usually, we design the columns located at the corners of a structure as actually loaded with biaxial bending. These are also identified when connected by beams on three sides, but the beams on opposite sides are of unequal spans or cross sections. By actually loaded columns are also identified in case the beams on opposite sides are not at the same level. Now, let's discuss how to identify whether a column in a building is actually loaded, uniaxially loaded or biaxially loaded, so that we can follow the design procedure accordingly. Let's consider a building frame with 12 columns numbered from C1 to C12 connected by 17 beams numbered from B1 to B17. In this layout, we need to identify whether these columns are actually loaded, uniaxially loaded or biaxially loaded. Talking about column 1, it is connected by two beams B1 and B4 which are aligned perpendicular to each other. Therefore, the moments will be created along both the axes of the column, that is, along x-axis and y-axis. And because of this, the effect of load on the column will be eccentric along both the axes. That is, the vertical load will act away from both the axes at some distance. Hence, we can conclude that C1 is an actually loaded column with biaxial bending. C2 satisfies the criteria of uniaxial bending. Since C2 is connected by three beams B1, B2 and B5, and the beams B1 and B2 lie on the opposite sides but with the same span of 4 meter. Therefore, the effect of the moment due to B1 and B2 will be zero and the net moment will be created due to B5 only. As a result, the effect of load on the column will be eccentric along any of the axes. Hence, we can conclude that C2 is an actually loaded column with uniaxial bending. C3 is connected by beams B2, B3 and B6. Since the beams on the opposite sides that is B2 and B3 have unequal spans and because of asymmetry in loading, there will be some moment generated due to B2 and B3. B6 will also create a moment on this column. As a result, 
the effect of load will be eccentric along both axes. Therefore, column 3 is an axially loaded column with biaxial bending. Again, C4 satisfies the criteria of biaxial bending since C4 is connected by the beams B3 and B7, which are aligned perpendicular to each other. Therefore, the effect of load will be eccentric along both the axes, as in case of column 1. Column 5 satisfies the criteria of uniaxial bending, as in case of column 2. Column 6 is connected by 4 beams of span 4 meter each. Therefore, due to symmetry in loading, the net moment along both the axes will be zero. And because of this, the load will pass through the centroid of the column. Hence, column 6 will be an actually loaded column. Talking about column 7, it is also connected by 4 beams, but B9 and B10 have different spans causing asymmetry in loading. On the other hand, B6 and B13 have the same spans. And because of this, the net moment due to B6 and B13 will be zero. Therefore, the moment will be generated along one axis only. And such a case will be an actually loaded column with uniaxial bending. Again, column 8 satisfies the criteria of uniaxial bending, column 9 biaxial bending, column 10 uniaxial bending, column 11 biaxial bending, as in case of column 3, and column 12 biaxially loaded column. So, this was all about this lecture. If you like my content and want to read more about it, you can check out my compiled PDFs on various topics which I discuss on this channel.